These are the five highest states in terms of average elevation. Together, their annual suicide rate averages 23.3 per 100,000 people, a shocking figure that is 42% higher than the national average of 16.4. If we widen our scope to include the 10 highest states, their average rate of 22 is still far beyond the national average. The highest 15 average at 21, the highest 20 at 19.9, and even when we include the top half of the tallest states, their average still doesn't fall in line with the national norm. Meanwhile, the five lowest elevation states average only a mere 11.9 suicides per 100,000 people, less than half that of the tallest five states. The lowest 10 average only 12, and the shortest 15 states still only reach an impressively low 13. There is an undeniable link between high altitude regions and depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, and unfortunately, actual suicide. And study after study confirms that as elevation increases, these problems become more and more severe. This uncovers an unexpected dark side to some of the most beautiful areas on planet Earth filled with breathtaking national parks, above average numbers of sunny days, crisp refreshing air, and year-round outdoor activities that encourage adventure and physical activity. So what's going on here? To unpack this mystery, we'll look at the various factors that set these states apart, such as the rural nature of these states, along with differences in culture and lifestyle, and the various socioeconomic differences. We'll go over the unexpected factors at the heart of this unsettling connection, and finally, we'll talk about what can be done to mitigate this risk if you or someone you know lives in or plans to visit one of these high-risk states. The first proposed explanation is that these states tend to be quite rural. They have higher levels of gun ownership and rural areas typically foster a sense of self-reliance that causes residents to be less likely to seek support and treatment when life gets challenging. And all of these factors are correlated with poorer mental health outcomes. But there are plenty of other similarly rural areas across the US that check the same boxes. And when the data is compared, the number numbers just don't add up, unless the region compared is also located at high altitude. Things get interesting when instead of rural areas, we look at just the data from large cities and metro areas. A general analysis of 750 cities found clear correlations between city life and reduced suicide risk. Cities with gun violence prevention laws have half the typical suicide rate, cities with fewer gun shops have four times lower rates, and cities with more parks have half the rate. Larger cities and more walkable neighborhoods in general were both found to lower this rate even further by increasing access to community resources and social support. Bearing in mind that general trend, when we look at major high-altitude urban cities like Denver and Colorado Springs being well-developed and packed with modern conveniences and infrastructure, we would expect to see statistics more like the national average. Yet surprisingly, they still report annual suicide rates considerably higher than normal. Health experts say suicides are on the rise in Colorado, in Denver. And suicide is the leading cause of death in Colorado for children and adolescents 10 to 24. In that case, maybe culture has something to do with it. Mountain life and extreme winter sports certainly do attract a different type of risk-taking adventure seeker compared to vastly different rural areas such as Tennessee or Mississippi. Maybe the culture and lifestyles of these residents is a driving force behind this mystery. History. This theory gets a bit questionable when we look at data from South Korea. It's hard to imagine a more distinct difference in culture than the stark contrast between Korea and the United States. Yet, independent studies comparing low versus high altitude areas reveal the exact same link as the one found in the United States. Upon reviewing data from Spain, the same link was found there as well. 
Furthermore, the study accounted for differences in income and age between the regions and the risk factor is still there and it is drastic. The study reports, regression analysis revealed that the age-adjusted suicide rate increased by 1.8% for every one meter increase in mean altitude. Even a seemingly insignificant increase in height, about three feet higher up, appears to produce a very significant increase in suicide rates. So what else might be causing this? Well, it would make sense that brutal mountain winters could be a contributing factor, with many high altitude regions receiving 15 to 30 feet of snow every winter, the blistering cold temperatures trap most people indoors, and closed roads contribute to social isolation and loss of work. CDOT told people to stay home or travel before the storm hit. They don't want to see a repeat of what we saw two years ago when drivers got stranded and needed rescue from firefighters in the National Guard. For those who aren't enthusiastically hitting the slopes, this can create a dismal existence until winter subsides. The mountains do, in fact, have a clearly defined suicide season. But it's not during the winter. Instead, it's the time you would least suspect. The warm, idyllic spring and summer months packed with sunshine, scenery, and opportunity. In 2016, a wave of suicides hit San Miguel County in Colorado. Being home to only 8,000 people, word quickly spread of a skier who ended the otherwise peaceful winter season by taking his own life just as the weather was looking up. This was shortly followed by two more suicides with the trend only ending in May with a fourth and final victim. Four might not sound like a lot, but this is a disproportionate figure for such a tiny county. With a simple change of a season, this trend skyrocketed their suicide rate to six times the national average. These warmer months seem to be so tragic precisely because the winter months are so brutal. The relief of spring and summer gives residents something to look forward to as they wait out one snowstorm after the next. Even if things are dreary right now, better weather and opportunities are just around the corner. But if things aren't looking up when bright days do arrive, it's easy to feel hopeless. John McIntosh, a psychology professor, addressed this effect, saying, You're holding out for spring during the winter, which is tough in many environments. You make it through, and it's supposed to be better, but you get to spring, and it's not better. As a result of that, it may be the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. This helps explain the seasonal change in these numbers, but it took a carefully designed study to find the root cause of this association. In 2019, three universities teamed up to conduct a huge study, which followed more than 3,700 people as they moved around between high and low altitude cities. Since the data collected was from the same people with the same backgrounds, the only major factor that changed with time was the altitude of where they lived. And the results were eye-opening. They reported that moving from low altitudes to higher altitudes was linked to substantially higher levels of depression symptoms, increased anxiety symptoms, and an increased likelihood of experiencing thoughts of self-harm, including suicidal ideation. And these findings consistently showed up when subjects began living anywhere higher than 900 meters or about 3,000 feet above sea level. These results concluded once and for all that this isn't caused by a simple correlation between people who live at altitude and an external factor like poverty or substance abuse. Instead, the altitude itself is changing the thought patterns and behavior of residents. The researchers pointed to hypoxia, or low oxygen, as the cause. As you move higher up, every breath you inhale contains less oxygen, with this effect becoming more and more extreme the higher you travel. This effect might be barely noticeable, especially once you acclimate to living in this new environment. But simply being able to stay alive doesn't mean the conditions are right to fully thrive. 
The researchers who confirmed this link singled out an enzyme known as tryptophan hydroxylase as a key suspect. Tryptophan hydroxylase is constantly working, taking tryptophan from the food that you eat and converting it into serotonin, a neurotransmitter that is essential to maintaining feelings of happiness and satisfaction. But there's another critical ingredient needed to make serotonin, and that is oxygen. Animal studies confirm that as researchers lower oxygen levels, the natural synthesis of serotonin is also reduced. They also recorded a noticeable increase in signs of depression shortly after. Additionally, researchers noted that as serotonin levels dropped, they saw dopamine levels do the exact opposite. And increases in dopamine supply have been linked to increased risk-taking and aggressive behavior, which might also help explain why these people aren't just feeling suicidal, but tragically following through with it. Now, uncovering a primary cause doesn't mean that there aren't other contributing factors that pile on and worsen this problem. Especially in recent years, many mountain towns have experienced huge surges in cost of living, even more so than the rest of us, and salaries have far from increased enough to compensate. People who move to these areas might even have high expectations for their future that don't always pan out as they envisioned. John McIntosh, the psychology professor quoted earlier, also chimed in on this subject. People have ideas of how things should be. If you live in an environment that's interpreted or seen as perfect, that may in fact lead you to feel even worse when you don't feel good in that environment and you may feel an even greater personal toll as a result. For someone struggling with their mental health, it can be incredibly difficult to link those issues with altitude. For instance, you might think that the connection would be made obvious whenever someone takes a trip to a lower altitude city and notices that their problems have begun to subside. But this study on US Marines who underwent training at high altitude found that they had negative moods for up to 90 days after returning to normal elevation. Possibly the ugliest trick that depression plays is the way that it fogs reality. When its grip on you is at its tightest, it doesn't feel like a chemical imbalance at all. It feels like everything in life is terrible and that there's no hope of it ever improving. But in many cases, even severe depression can rapidly fade away once the current situation improves, an appropriate medication is prescribed, or the environment is changed. So what can be done about this? Is the only cure to pack up and leave the place you love in order to live at sea level? Most likely not, but that's something to discuss with your doctor and certainly worth considering after exhausting other options since nothing is more important than mental health. But in just the last decade, huge advancements have been made in antidepressant medications, including ones that target serotonin, which is a chemical that seems to be at the core of this problem. It's also important to note that lower oxygen levels don't automatically send an otherwise healthy person into a downward spiral, but it is more likely to be the final straw that amplifies other struggles that are already there. I firmly believe that every person at some point in their lives can really stand to benefit from therapy. Working through problems and coming out the other side makes every aspect of life better. And no matter what altitude you live at, if you ever find yourself in a dark place, help is always available. Warm Lines, a wonderful alternative to hotlines, provide an opportunity to just talk to someone should you happen to be struggling but aren't having a full-blown crisis. Warmline.org has a directory to find a number in your area. If you are experiencing a crisis, 988 is the number to dial in the US, or findahelpline.com can pull up the appropriate number no matter what country you're in. Hopefully, spreading awareness about this connection will help encourage more people to seek treatment. Thank you for watching.